What's up world? Willie what if here with another episode of what if Deku gave up on being a hero. I hope you're having a great day, and if not maybe this will help out. He should not have been thinking with his dick. Of all the things to do the thinking, why the fuck was it the thing between his legs that made most of his decisions last night? He could have fought the issue more, told Himiko that they could have helped Ochacho find a relationship or set her up on a dating website or anything other than what they actually did. He wasn't as guilty about it since it was between the three of them, but just how in the fuck did he even manage in that situation? Yes, he really enjoyed it. If there was ever a boost to his dying ego it was that he pleasured the two of them, but the things he said, why did he say those things? Granted, he deeply enjoyed getting to say those things to such beautiful women, but it was all down to the principle of the matter. His loyalty is first and foremost to Himiko, she is everything to him and thus he demands no less from her. Yet he violated that commitment and thrust himself into the arms of another woman. In fact he was even closer to claiming Ochacho than he ever was with Himiko likely because he figured the hero who saved so many lives wouldn't react violently if he pushed a little. He loved Himiko more than words could describe and he wasn't outright scared of her, but there was always an element of animalistic fear whenever they got rough. He suppressed it for her of course, but like last night where he fought the urge to jump up and run at the sight of the razor blade, there would always be that part of him that wanted to, stay alive essentially. That rebelled against the thought of lasting, permanent, possible life-ending pain. Biting was one thing, yes it hurt, but so long as she didn't literally rip into his neck then it was just pain that would fade over time. That and he had started to look forward to it since she without fail made him explode while she was doing it. Cutting, that scared him. Too many chances for things to go wrong, for slicing too deep and nicking something important. Then to add to it was the fact Himiko knew how to use blades like it was second nature which in of itself was concerning enough, but the woman was also an assassin in her youth. If there was ever a person to be a little cautious of it was her. That didn't mean he didn't adore her qualities, but you had to take the good with the bad and when such facts were true, it weighed on the mind even unconsciously. All Izuku wanted was to give himself in totality and be given such in return without fear of abandonment, but it frustrated him to no end how every fucking day he had to tiptoe around the basic thing that showed the most love for someone with Himiko. He wanted to fuck, pure and simple. He wanted to debase himself in front of Himiko, to have her eyes focus solely on him alone as he gave her everything. Yet despite letting her do practically everything to him that any sane person would reject violently, she never let him just push himself in. Yes, the argument could be made that she was also restricting her own desires, but he let her cut him for crying out loud. How much more pain could that woman want to inflict on him? As sad as he was to admit it, Ochacho didn't give him any of those worries. She didn't seem so inclined to violence and if anything the girl melted like putty in his hands. He bet that if he just pushed a little further when he was teasing her she would have let him have his way with her. Not that he would betray Himiko over such a simple reason, but goddamn did it take a weight off his shoulders for a moment to not have to worry about going too far and dealing with a woman's wrath. If he was completely honest, he found Ochacho's figure to be more attractive than Himiko's in just how, round she was. There was no other way to describe the woman other than bubbly and round in all the right places. She even had those adorable twin birthmarks on her cheeks that practically made Izuku always remember her face. Himiko was, lethal. Her energy, her personality, her desires, her body, her love, it all spoke of a dominating, subtle force that could control and manage everything by being so unassuming. Her beauty was more sharp, angular than most women. A wonderfully cruel thing that offered only pain if displeased and subjugation if satisfied that was so godly in appearance that no one would consider it as bad despite the sadism of her soul. There was a twisted kindness to her, one that bit deep into the meat and muscle and repaired the injury out of an endless devotion to he that loved her in return. She lacked the cuddly fat of the heroine or the motherly nature that radiated off Ochacho so strongly that it made Izuku a little at ease when she was with him and Himiko. Instead the villainous, former villainous, had the disposition of an involved killer who knew how to ruin a man or bring him up at her whims. Admittedly Izuku pondered that night as he went to sleep if he would have had better success with his goal of children if he was with Ochacho. After all she had a far more maternal sense about her, certainly had better physical traits for healthy childbirth right down to wide, thick hips that he could lose fingers in if he squeezed her and outright said her entire reason for coming here in the first place was to get pregnant, by him no less. Insane, he knew, but the nearly unconscious mind had such thoughts. His place was with Himiko and nothing short of adultery would make him leave. She was the one who brought him up and valued him above all else, that's why he gave his body to her desires and centered all his primal drive on her which she kept denying. They had a life to build together so he needed to be patient for her sake, regardless of how soft, squishy and warm Ochacho was. That made what he was currently doing all the more awkward as after waking up to an alarm that neither he nor Himiko recognized, they were floating in the air as Ochacho flared wildly to get up from under them and check her mobile. They remained like that in a panic dazed until she gave a relieved sigh, closed her phone and looked up. 
Both he and Himiko were scrambling around in the air like panic swimmers until a padded hand gripped both their ankles and pulled them down to the mattress. The word release was said and like magic, the weight returned to their bodies as they sank to the springs. The two looked at each other for confirmation of what just happened, only to be directed to the side of the bed as a very nude Ochacho gave them a good morning dot and quad. She didn't have an ounce of shame or regret about herself as she looked at them. She was even smiling as she began to play with her hair. At the moment Izuku wished he hadn't had been so exposed, much less with an unusual amount of morning wood, but he nervously returned the smile as everything he said to the woman came flooding back. Himiko was silent for a time as she watched the two of them before crawling over to Izuku and wrapping her arms around him. Ochacho grinned and climbed onto the sheets as well, taking the space between them and placing her arms around them both. This happened to be the same time they lost all sensation of weight again and were effortlessly thrown on their backs as she laid down. Looking at Himiko he hesitated to do as his instincts told and return the hold. Yet the blonde silently nodded and dragged her arms over the heroine's chest and back while curling her legs over her torso right as the slasher forcibly grabbed Izuku's arms and brought them to meet her over the heroine's tits with a tight lock of their hands. Taking the hint, Izuku wrapped his legs around one of Ochacho's as his manhood rested on her thigh. He felt the sensation of a soft hand rub his back and without thinking he attached his lips to her neck and suckled. The sound came from the heroine's left as well which showed Himiko had the same idea while her thumb caressed his hand possessively. There wasn't nearly the same amount of passion as the previous night, in fact it didn't feel overly sexual by much in the moment. It was more akin to simple, basic comfort from a person, a woman in his case and knowing they were here. The world was scary and right now it was just the three of them in this safe little bubble with no one to hurt them or take them away. He was happy here with these two women and he didn't want to leave. Soon he felt the hand move up his back and through his hair while Himiko shifted over Ochacho's body to hold him more. Everything began to slow down and his body started to relax, his eyelids grew heavy and before long he had fallen asleep again. There was no telling how long he had been dreaming, but the thing that woke him was a light humming and a soft sensation running over his face. Opening his eyes he saw Ochacho on her side, staring at him with a content smile while her unreasonably soft fingers glided over his cheek. Her voice was quiet, warm and welcoming when she spoke. Hey sleepyhead, I missed you Dodenquat. Not sure what to really say to that he shifted away slightly, only to feel her other arm lock around his back. Blinking some of the sleep from his eyes, Izuku let out an uneasy smile as he returned the whisper. Missed you too, so where's Himiko? Question mark and quat. A giggle left the heroine as she put her index finger to her lips and pointed to her back. Sitting up, Izuku saw Himiko wrapped around Ochacho's torso like a baby in the deepest of sleep. Laying back down he suddenly felt jealous and conflicted, also remarkably safe. Almost to a degree he hadn't felt since early childhood before his quirkless curse happened. It was undeniably because of those brown eyes focusing on him so kindly, as if to say you're safe here with me dot and quat. Biting his lip for a moment as he stared at the woman, Izuku found himself both cold and rather, lonely. He wasn't sure what it was or if it was really the right word, but he wanted to hold someone. Not in a erotic way, but more in a, reassuring way. Whatever it was he continued to study Ochacho, not embarrassed by how he took in all of her, and found her to be perfect. She was just so damn welcoming with her eyes and how pudgy she looked that she appeared made to be held. He wanted her and she knew it, so Izuku brought himself closer and wrapped his arms loosely around her neck as he squished himself against her. She sighed happily and rubbed his back once more as Izuku shut his eyes and let himself be swept up in the comfort, silently feeling all the knotted parts of his soul relax for the first time in his life. Opening his eyes again he saw Himiko staring at him with similar eyes to him as she nuzzled up to Ochacho. Putting his head against the heroine's neck he stared back and reached out a hand that rolled over the blonde's face as he was indescribably glad to touch her again as he was in this state of zen. They both gazed on as empty vessels swept up in the base pleasure of safety as the brunette pulled their strings with a soft voice and an even softer body which they attached themselves to like babes. Himiko was fine, he was fine, Ochacho was fine. Nobody would hurt them or take them away. So the mint and the gold continued to look at each other while clinging to their lover who made no attempt to shake them off or even move as their limbs and bodies practically entrapped her. She just laid there and accepted the comfort and perhaps even love they were trying to give. No one cared to mention time or possible obligations or perhaps even cramps as the three were together. To them it could have been forever since it was the first time in a long time all three felt so taken care of. Then like some benevolent angel Ochacho sat up from her prone position and stretched while the pair snapped out of their trace, only to reach out to each other as Himiko crawled through the opening behind the brunette and set herself on top of Izuku. They held each other and kissed silently, rubbing and grabbing to fight for the best position with each other until their delightful heroine spoke up in that same heavenly tone as she turned her head towards them. Anyone up for breakfast question mark and quat. Neither argued and got up from the bed without a word as they began to put on some sort of clothes while the more voluptuous woman walked out towards the living room to get her clothes. 
Izuku and Himiko looked at each other with a mix of shame and guilt and pain. It was clear they both liked having Ochacho, but the fact that the girl had that much control over them was, unsettling. Yet she was so squishy and warm that neither really blamed the other, not that there was anything to really blame for. A knock came from the doorway as Ochacho leaned in from the doorway with a grin on her face that made her birthmarks bounce. You guys still want breakfast? Question mark and quad. The two looked at their original partner and wordlessly walked forward as Ochacho practically skipped her way to the kitchen. So here he was, sitting down with a bottle of water next to Himiko who was sipping away at a mug of warm cow's blood while the woman who caused the situation ran her finger over the rim of a cup of coffee, not once taking her eyes off them. Nobody had said anything as the morning, afternoon, air filled the living room through an open window that was filled with tension. Tension that snapped when Ochacho clapped her hands together with such glee that it made them both flinch as she started talking. Well I gotta say that was the best night I've had since graduation. Though I coulda gone with a little more penetration, that's alright. Izuku I gotta say you have one hell of a dick on you and Miko you certainly know how to make a woman like me squeal. All in all, last night was the best decision I made in years so here's what we're gonna do. As of this moment I'm dating the two of you, meaning I'm off the market and so are you guys. We only have fun with the three of us and that's it, no more people coming in, got it question mark and quad. The pair looked at each other for guidance and simply nodded out of fear and less than reluctant agreement which made the brunette clap her hands again with a smile. Great. Now then, Miko you don't gotta worry about this hurting your parole situation since this sort of thing is pretty common in the rehab biz so I'll just have to fill out a form and things will be good. As for you Zuzu and Quat, Himiko glowed at the heroine with more than a little annoyance. Don't call him that. You can kiss him, hop on his dick, and have his kids alongside me for all I care, but only I get to call him that dot and Quat. Not a hint of anger resided in Ochacho's eyes as she lowered the giddiness of her smile and sipped some of her coffee. Okay, Zuki it is then. Now Zuki, there shouldn't be any legal issue with us dating in regards to your sidekick gig, but I'm gonna say this outright, I don't want you admitting to anyone in our circle about our relationship. Namely because the press would be all over it, which would lead to them snooping around and putting Miko at risk. And quad. Izuku felt his heart stop at the thought and nodded as he spoke. You have my word Ochacho. And quad. The heroine put a finger to her chin and hummed for a moment before staring at the man with curious eyes. Why don't you call me a nickname question mark and quad. Pursing his lips Izuku decided to push his luck as he clutched Himiko's hand and sounded way too eager for an attempt at bargaining. Only so long as you agree to cuddle up with us again. That was some good shit and we need that, you, we need you again dot and quad. A blush filled Ochacho's cheeks as she grinned satisfactory at the pair. Alright, I can do that for you too. But aside from the nickname, you gotta tell me a bit more about yourself. I already know Miko pretty well, you on the other hand not so much dot and quad. Izuku smiled, liking where this conversation was going a bit too much. You got a deal, Rosie, but enough about you and me, what about you Himiko question mark and quad. Of all the three the most dangerous one looked the most displeased as she glared at her original lover and yanked him harshly to her side. Her Lilith fingers dug into the skin of his arm and twisted it slightly as she stood in her emotions. Turning her gaze to Ochacho, Himiko gave an expression that was judgmental in the extreme, one that said without saying anything I was here first dot and quad. Yet that faded as the blonde sighed and lessened but not releasing, her hold on Izuku. She appeared tired and spent as her thumb caressed his skin repeatedly with a contemplated mood about her. The yellow of her eyes stared into Ochacho's hazel ones and there was a hint of compassion, gratitude and even love of a sort, though it felt far less powerful or devious or as wanting compared to their teenagers. Then when compared to how her big baby made her feel, it was no contest who held more power over her soul. Taking another sip of her daily blood while Izuku had started to snuggle up to her like some clingy, huggy puppy that she couldn't live without, Himiko looked at the woman she owed everything to. Her arms went around the idiot who was now shifting himself onto her chair and her onto his lap as he tried everything to get just that little closer to her. Pursing her lips as she ran her fingers through his hair, Himiko finally spoke up to her savior. Shiki, I don't mind that you're here. I don't mind if you want to be with me and Zuzu. I don't mind if you want to leave here knocked by this wonderful man. I owe you that much so long as you won't run around our backs, but, I want first rights to him. You can be with me whenever, but when it comes to feeling good with him and it's the three of us, I want to be the one to have his first. I get the first kiss, the first finger, everything before we get started dot and quad. She kissed his neck as he paused to listen to her demands before she continued. Like I said before sweetie, I owe you my life which is why I haven't turned you black and blue for bringing up your little three-way plan. Zuzu is my responsibility and the most important person in the world to me so I'm showing an incredible amount of trust by letting you have him with me. If you want me to then I'm okay with that since you're my best friend and we're both girls, but I'm telling you this now, Zuzu will always take priority over everything else to me. And quad. She leaned forward as Izuku held onto her belly. It isn't that I don't love you like a sister, Ochacho, 
but he and I only hit each other for the longest time. We barely have money, our families are non-existent, I'm really his only support network and your mind which makes this twice as complicated while you're one of the most famous heroes of the age. I'm sorry to say but the fact of the matter is that he and I need each other to survive more, so if he needs my help and you're not dying, he is going to come first. Quat. The brunette drank some of her coffee with a rather passive face and pushed the drink to the side. She didn't look upset or hurt or angry or even pitiful at the statement, just accepting what was said. That's fair, you two were together long before I pushed my way in. I just want to be a part of what you two have and if I need to play second fiddle for a while until we get there, then that's fine. I'm just amazed we've gotten to this point because I honestly thought this would fail before it got off the ground, so I'm more than happy to play ball. I won't be able to show up as much due to my job, but I'll be around when I can and I'll make the time for you guys. Quat. The heroine pointed a finger at the pair. However, I expect a few things when I do. First off, when I show up we're gonna screw, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I work a hard fucking job so if I make time out of my schedule to visit you two I want your attentions and to feel good like we did last night. Secondly, we're going to do more than just screw. We're a couple now so we are going to actually do things normal couples do. Thirdly and this is mainly for Izuku, I want you to come see my parents in a month's time so they'll get off my back about being single. Quat. Sitting up as he watched the heroine speak to him, Izuku ran his fingers through his darling's hair and paused for a moment as he picked up Himiko from his lap and set the woman on the floor. His expression was far more serious, yet there was an obvious slab of jealousy when he looked at Ochacho. Drumming his fingers on the table he shook his head, knowing this was going to be very telling of his insecurities. That's fine, but dot 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 and quat. He turned his head to Himiko almost sheepishly. I feel the need to address the elephant in the room. Namely, if she can be included in your sort of things dot and quat. The blonde raised an eyebrow at her beloved, taking a seat next to him with a curious face. She doesn't have to be involved in our rough stuff. Like I said, you fulfill me a lot more in that way. Though I guess swapping a little blood now and again would be fine and if she wants to watch us then it would be okay with me. Why do you ask question Mark and Quat? He clenched his teeth and decided to go for it. After all he literally just had his way with both of them last night and he needed to let this be known. So he grabbed Himiko gently by the shoulders and spoke. She doesn't get to call you what I call you. Only I can call you that dot and Quat. If there was ever a face that demented villainous made which just oozed with sadistic satisfaction, it would be the one she was making now. Her cheeks were rosy and flushed as she caressed under his chin with a fang-bearing smile that Izuku lowered his head to almost as a sign of submission. He got close to the woman, scooping her up and burying his face in her chest as Himiko hummed and cooed into his ear proudly before laughing with pride. Her hands caressed his face possessively while she continued to giggle and squeal. Don't worry Zuzu, you'll still be my baby and I'll still be your mommy. Nobody else is gonna get between us and Chiki is just a new member of the family, so she'll just watch. I won't use her for what we do and I swore to you I'd only be with you and I have no intention of breaking it. Dot and quat. Izuku clung even tighter to the petite blonde and winced as her fingers traced the scars her teeth had made. The two of them blocked the rest of the world out for a time before a tap came from the other end of the table. They flinched and turned to look at the girl who was more than a little annoyed at the exclusion. So is there anything else we need to discuss? Question Mark and Quat. The two lovers stared at each other and shook their heads as they watched Ochacho fume a bit. She leaned back with a sigh and contemplated for a minute before opening her eyes again. Any suggestions on what we should do for the rest of the day? I took three days off so I have today and tomorrow to myself. And quat. Slipping his arms under Himiko's legs and back, Izuku stood up with her bridal style as he gazed pointedly at the brunette. I say we go back to bed for a while. Preferably with you in the middle. And quat. Ochacho grinned at the desire in his voice, but Izuku was rebuked rather violently when Himiko slapped him. No. No more cuddling or anything until I get finished with making my articles. I'm already behind because of last night and the last thing I need when I have to time crunch is you two either flopping about on the bed or dragging me into it. Dot and quat. Disappointment surged in the quirkless man's eyes, but begrudgingly he put his darling down. Smiling at her, Izuku ruffled her hair and stepped away. Is there anything we can do for you in the meantime? Question Mark and quat. The slasher was slowly becoming more irate by the second before she stormed off to the desk in the corner of the living room where her laptop was situated. Booting it up and retreating an entire binder labeled with the current mouth from a drawer in the desk, she began to tense up as her fingers touched the keyboard. No, I just need to focus on work. It'll take me all day so just leave me alone until I call you both. Though Zuzu, can you hang out with Chiki for a while? You can screw or whatever, but just give her a good day off. The girl deserves it after what we did to her dot and quad. Then like clockwork Imiko began to type away at her keyboard in a single-minded pursuit that Izuku could sympathize with from his own day job. Turning around, he eyed Ochacho, who shrugged and gestured to the front door. Going with her example, they both approached the exit and opened it. He paused for a second and turned back. I love you. Himiko didn't look up from her screen, but
but she did answer back which meant the world to him. Love you too, Zuzu Dadenquat. Leaving with a grin on his face Izuku followed after Ochacho who was giving him a rather befuddled expression as they moved out of the complex and into the dying daylight. She shifted her head towards him and raised an eyebrow. Mommy? Is that really what Miko has you call her question mark and quat? Izuku would have blushed, but he has seen way too much of the woman to be embarrassed. Instead he walked up next to her and slipped his arm around her shoulders. Yes, now what can I do to make you exceptionally happy? Himiko gave me orders to give you a good time and you better believe I will. Now, tell me what you want Rosie dot and quat. Oh Chacho placed her hand in his, glad to be held after being alone for so long and giggled at herself as Izuku kept pace. Any ideas? I'm down for anything tonight dot and quat. The quirkless man thought about it and felt himself both hope and hate himself for what he was about to say. Well, I know I'm going to sound like a pig, but how about we go to my place and get to know each other a little better? Preferably without our clothes dot and quat. Oh Chacho glared at him for a moment. You seem awfully eager to get with me again right after we left Himiko. Where's all that devotion you were on about question mark and quat? Izuku shrugged and stepped closer to the woman. I'm just doing what Himiko wants and she clearly has no issue with us being intimate. Truth be told however I'm not asking for a lay or anything, I would never do that behind her back. I just want to cuddle with you again dot and quat. He hesitated for a second as he pursed his lips at his weakness. You managed to make me and her feel safe, so, like I said, we're gonna ask that a lot dot and quat. Oh Chacho raised another eyebrow at the man who was holding her. Really? Cuddling up with me was that good for you too? Why question mark and quat? Izuku shrugged and put them towards the path directed at the train station. Well, there's a lot of reasons. Part of it is because you're so damn chubby that it's impossible not find you comfortable to hug, then it's that you look so cute all the time, but, the biggest reason is, I think at least, is that you just have this everything will be alright vibe about you that we drink up like wine. There's something so comforting about being in your presence that neither of us can do for each other, at least not to your degree. And quat. The heroine listened and furrowed her brows as they were nearing the train terminal. I guess. Some people have called me huggable before so I get it. But, how was I last night? You liked what I did for you. Right question mark and quat. Waiting for the train to pull up, Izuku placed his arm around the brunette's neck and thought for a minute. You certainly have more to you physically than Himiko to be honest, but you're both beautiful in your own special ways. Personally, I like teasing you, but, was I a bit too into it when we started question mark and quat. The heroine waved her hands in front of her repeatedly to quickly destroy that idea as fast as she could. Oh hell no, you were fantastic. Miko was too, but frankly I wanted a little more from you both. Speaking of which, I gotta ask, why exactly did you let her do that with the razor blade and the biting question mark and quat? He played with her short brown hair and shrugged like it was the most obvious thing in the world. Because she wants it. You know how she is with blood so I let her use me for that. Granted the cutting thing was new, but usually she takes good care of me so I let her have her way with me. I've even learned to get excited when she bites, mainly because she beats me off until I pop every time she does it, but still dot and quat. Apprehension filled Ochacho's soul to a point Izuku couldn't have not noticed. Much less when the woman leaned in to hug him in such a protective manner he was astonished as to why she felt the need. Then she spoke and it became much clearer. Zuki, how much do you know about Miko's past question mark and quat? Pushing the girl off of him, Izuku responded flatly as he reviewed the facts as Imiko had told him. That she wasn't always on the right side of the law and had to use her talents for violence to make a living. One she was very successful at since she completed over 50 jobs. Need I say more question mark and quat? She moved herself back to his side and hugged him again. Do you know the name of the group she was employed with at the time question mark and quat? The man shrugged and moved both himself and the woman to the now opening train before sitting down at the back bench. No, should I question mark and quat? Oh Chacho said nothing for a while as the train left the station, only reaffirming her hold on the man in a way that didn't feel, affectionate per se, it was more akin to one gripping a drowning person to keep them from going under. It doesn't matter. Miko is a different person now and she's done nothing but prove that there's more to her than her issues like you said. For now how about we wait until we get to your place to talk, after all there's a whole day in front of us and an even longer night dot and quat. Considering the heroine's wishes Izuku relaxed himself and ran his hands through Ochacho's short clipped hair absentmindedly until their stop came up. Exiting the train they made their way to Izuku's apartment after a good half hour of silent walking which ended with Izuku ushering the girl into his home with wide arms as his bland, barely alive shithole of an apartment was laid bare to her. It was still, lifeless and had none of the warmth of Himiko's home which the three brought into it. But it was still Izuku's place so he entered, shut the door and waited for Ochacho to say anything. She observed everything with an almost artistic sense of vision and faced him after a bit. What do you do for fun Zuki question mark and quat. Slipping his shoes off and setting himself on the sofa, Izuku stared up at the ceiling as a creeping sense of, emptiness started to drift into him. He couldn't explain it well, 
but he found himself without anything to do. Thankfully it vanished when he heard Ochacho's question. Not to be crude, but Himiko, I spend most of my off time with her so that's about it dot and quat. A padded finger slid over the dining table, gathering a light puff of dust that made the heroine's expression change. I can tell, this place lacks energy of any kind dot and quat. Shaking his head in annoyance, Izuku sat up on the sofa and tried to be polite. You just want to stand over there all day or do you want to lay down question mark and quat. She gave him an odd look and tapped her feet on the floor. Can you get a blanket please question mark and quat. He grinned. Sure, anything else while I'm up question mark and quat. Ochacho paused for a moment as a blush covered her cheeks. Can you take your clothes off again, like right now question mark and quat. Not one to argue over such a simple matter he removed his shirt, pants and boxers, leaving completely bare to the eyes of his new partner. She studied him once more and began to undo her own clothing, throwing off her shirt, pants, bra and panties to expose herself once more to him. Izuku eyed her with a proud hunger and gestured for her to follow him to the bedroom. She did as asked without delay and eased herself down under the covers of his twin-sized mattress next to him. Instantly his hands crawled over her body in a slow, appreciative manner as he wrapped his arms around her. Yet instead of using the situation to make another move, he flipped off the lamp on the nightstand and nuzzled his head below hers. It was a nice, comfortable sensation as their shared body heat rapidly chased away the cold under the covers and the touch of skin made them cling even harder. It lacked the urgency of last night that propelled them to find each other in the arms of that wonderful, demented woman. They were two lonely souls with very few people in the world that burned away the pain with touch as they awaited their third to finish her obligations to the world. Moving back and shifting under the blanket, Ochacho lifted Izuku's head on her biceps and kissed him. It wasn't lust-driven or hungry like she had done with him and Miko the previous night, now it was short, peckish and quick. A simple animal reinforcement of affection that tries to strengthen a bond. He laughed in the darkness and placed a hand on her back, glad to not be alone while Himiko was away in her apartment. Is it weird that I find that a bit dirty compared to when I kiss Himiko? Question mark and quat. She pulled him a bit closer as his weight crashed into her body, wrapping her legs over him like they did to her. Ochacho shut her eyes as she found a serenity in his arms. Not really, she is your first and only so it's expected. Dot and quat. In the quiet of the room the heroine dug in a bit as they started to relax feeling the more inquisitive sides of her brain come loose at the surety of being more at ease than she had been since finishing high school. Zuki, what's your favorite thing? Question mark and quat. He nuzzled at her neck for a minute before carefully grabbing her and flipping over without disturbing the blanket. Himiko, but she isn't a thing so, love and physical training. Dot and quat. She shifted for a bit as she found the proper position under the sheet and pecked him on the lips. What do you love the most about life? Question mark and quat. He kissed her back at last before feeling his hand go through her hair. That it can always get better even if it gets worse at the start. I never would have imagined where I am now seven months ago. It sucked at the start but it was worth it because I'm here dot and quat. She laughed. Is it because of Miko that it was worth it question mark and quat. He returned the laugh and ran a thumb along her cheek. Yes, she makes my days far better. I know we haven't known each other long, but if you're willing to help my darling then I'll do the same for you dot and quat. Another kiss came his way as she laid her head under his. I appreciate that Zuki. Miko needs that kind of structure in her life and I've been alone for so long that I kinda gave up the idea of having someone in my life again. To be honest me and her were never, intimate even though she suggested it a few times, but strangely I like it. I like the kisses and the hugs and even the way you both latched onto me last night. And quat. The crime fighter recoiled for a moment as realized how she had acted under the sway of comfort and turned to lay flat, which made her partner cling on as she stared at the darkened ceiling while Izuku held her. Putting her hand over his, Ochacho sighed when the reality of what she did hit her. I'm sorry if I'm throwing too much at you guys. I know this has only been a one night thing so far, but I just, wanna be a normal woman. Not a rabbity or a war vet or some kind of savior. Just a basic girl with a husband and kids with a white picket fence. Honestly Zuki, I came over to try and maybe get Miko to let me share you with her because you're the only guy I can think of that isn't out to use people or has some messed up history with me. And quat. She continued as her thumb caressed his palm. You're a wonderful guy so far and you certainly know how to make a girl happy. But, I came there with ill intentions because I was desperate for love and sex, not because I wanted you as a person. I know that's awful to say, but listening to how Himiko had gotten everything I wanted, it made me crazy. You both deserve better than me just rushing in because I was desperate. And quat. Her hands touched her face and she would have floated off the sheets if Izuku hadn't been latched to her. I mean I feel guilty for not going in with more nobility, but the things you both did and what you said to me, it honestly made my heart flutter and I want more of it. I want to feel wanted and needed and you guys did that more than perfectly. I want to stick around and see the three of us maybe grow into something beautiful. I want to learn to love you like Miko does and have you learn to love me like you do with Miko. I know it's messed up to be in a relationship with two other people, but at this point I just want something that's going to last. And quat. 
The fervor in her voice rose as she slapped her palms down. I need to know that I can still be more than just an icon or a light in the dark and I could never just take you from Himiko for my own selfishness. So this is where I put myself and I like it. She is always going to need my help in life and you look just as bad, so I guess this is better for all of us. I get my family, Miko gets her weird blood partner in you and you get us. It isn't ideal or normal, but I want this to work. My last relationship ended horribly and that was years ago. I couldn't help him so I had to leave and I've been hollow ever since. At least until last night. And quad. Izuku heard this all and took in as best he could. He wasn't quite sure of how he felt about any of it, of this situation. For crying out loud he was in bed with the woman completely nude and he felt good in a physical way, but he shared in her belief that this was wrong somehow. He wanted to be with Himiko, to hold her like he was this woman, yet he felt far more at ease with Ochacho despite only knowing her for such a short time. He wanted to hate himself, to scream and shout and deny that any woman could have a place similar to his darling, to the woman who made him want to live, in his heart. Izuku didn't love Ochacho, didn't adore her like he did Himiko, and had no intentions of taking her to the altar. Yet here he was, loving every second of her attention and desire as they worked out the pain like an ointment, just waiting for Himiko to be finished with her work. Did he want this situation to work out? On a primal, natural, level he did for the simple fact that it gave him more mating options. What man wouldn't? But what did he know about the woman aside from what Himiko told him? The girl dated Katsuki Bakugo of all fucking people, presumably of her own free will, so that said something about her as a person. Still he couldn't escape how nice it was to simply be around her now. It wasn't a butterfly-filled, magnetic pull like he had when he and Himiko first started dating. It was a basic mood she brought to a place that he noticed and he liked that Himiko was there to share in that. They both needed mental security and Ochacho bought that from simply relaxing and being herself, or maybe that was just the oxytocin talking considering he had been hugging this woman for over an hour now. He could sympathize with being lonely, it was one of the reasons he tried to jump off that bridge so long ago, but to go to such lengths to find fulfillment? How damaged was the heroine he was comforting? Did it matter since Himiko had done far worse in her past? Izuku certainly wanted her physically, yet did he want her for more than base animal pleasure? Should he want her for more when he still had Himiko? How would any of this even work, much less for years or even a lifetime considering how Ochacho talked? Was he wrong to want in the first place? To demand anything out of an unusual situation other than Himiko's fidelity? What did he even want aside from sex in this setup? Was he even right to want a possibility of love with this woman, even as an idea? Murmuring a decisive end to his mental turmoil, Izuku sat up and cradled Ochacho's head like he always wanted someone to do for him at his lowest. I going to be honest, I have no clue on any of this. You just blindsided Himiko and I then the next day we're all in this multi-person relationship because you want it. It's, weird, to put it mildly. But, like I said, since you helped Himiko I'll try for the both of you. I just need that you don't go looking anywhere else for pleasure and I'll treat you as well as I treat her. And quad. He slipped a thumb over her cheek once more as he petted her in that controlling, possessive manner Himiko does with him. I haven't had anyone for years, the same as you and if you devote yourself to the two of us then we'll make this work. Just don't ever hurt Himiko or me. She means everything to me and I'll learn to do the same for you. Honestly, I find you to be ungodly attractive which is why I didn't fight as hard. But, I don't know if I want to love you beyond that. Dot and quad. He lowered his hand down and rubbed one of her arms to keep them connected. It isn't that I don't find you appealing or a great person. Hell I'm almost sure I want to, but part of me is scared that I'll love Himiko less for it or if I want to love you for the right reasons. You're more than a body and so it's wrong of me to only want that. Maybe we can develop something between the three of us as strange as it is to say. I just, don't know you enough to be certain and I'm scared of hurting you or God forbid Himiko. Quat. Ochacho shifted herself upward and put her arms around his chest, feeling more than a little touched at his kindness for her sake. A glint entered her eye and she felt even better as his pulse touched her. I get what you mean and you have every reason to be suspicious of me. I wasn't sure of this myself, but I made the choice so now I'm gonna stick to it. After all, what else can life offer any of us at the moment? We've been alone so why not just go with it? We all need a new life and we can help each other build that. Pain is part of living, but it's the drive to make something lasting that a little bit of pain can't topple. That's what communication is for, right now you and I are working through the emotions and the hardships that'll come our way and when Miko finishes, we'll lay down and have the same kind of talk with her. Dot and quad. She put a finger to his chin and turned it towards her. It'll be difficult and uncomfortable at first, but that's how all good things start. The important thing is that we put the effort into maintaining it through the good and the bad. If all three of us do that then it'll work, we just need time to get there. Dot and quad. Izuku stared at the brunette as his eyes finally adapted to the darkness and found himself much more at ease with himself. This is not how he pictured his life at all, but it was what he had so he may as well roll with it. Hugging the girl he brought the both of them down to the bed. If you're willing to put the effort in with me and Himiko then I guess this is alright. And quad. 
Ochacho smiled to herself and returned the hug as she felt pride at the progress they made. It was only half a step since they still needed to talk with Miko, but it was still a step forward. There were hours ahead of them now, perhaps even until the next day started, when they could see the third part of their family. So much time and no idea how to use it. Her mind drifted towards the idea of something naughty for the simple fact that she had years to make up for, but she didn't want to push until Miko was back. Though she did say that they could screw so maybe. For some reason as she held the man who was now her boyfriend, male concubine? Ochacho felt the more insidious, hungry and even competitive part of her mind start to look at the words Miko used give the girl a good day off. Quad. She never specified what that had to include or not and she brought up permission for them to be intimate. Those could easily be interpreted in a lot of ways and Izuku had already been shown to be direct when the blonde told him to do something. All it would take was a little convincing, a little seduction, a little more force and she could get more than this half-assed barely and stuff. After all she was a top hero, a war veteran and acted like a saint every fucking day. Plus she saved Himiko's life and gave her the legal freedom to not rot in Tartarus after the girl tried to ruin the entire fucking world with that group of creeps. She deserved more than that pittance of last night. In fact she deserved to get her jollies every day and a baby or two and this man was the right type of messed up that she could save after failing Katsuki. They both fucking owed her. Her parents rebuilt his fucking home and she saved that poor girl from a wasted life, so getting the full package was the least she could ask for. Of course she was willing to have Himiko stay with them. She wasn't a complete monster and she was willing to bend to their rules. She just wanted this one thing for her from the relationship. However if Himiko fought the idea or blew a gasket assuming she didn't relapse and get violent which Ochacho had complete faith that she had recovered enough to not worry, then she could just say a few things or tell her Izuku wanted to practice on her before he took her virginity. If that failed and they both refused to play ball at all, then she'd start getting mean. She was a hero so it was fine for her to ask some things from life, much less something so basic from her partners. She cringed at the thoughts and found herself ashamed of her mind. These two needed her, so why the hell was she thinking of acting like some controlling monster? But was she really though? All she wanted was the rest of what went on last night. She was being loyal and kind to her lovers, all she wanted was to skip the pretense. In fact maybe it would be better if she and Zuki start practicing for Miko. They all agreed to it, so why not just act now and explain it to her afterwards? Besides, it wasn't like she had forever before her eggs died out and her chances of having babies vanished. She had the money and Izuku said he wanted kids, with Himiko sure, but they were all together as a three-person family so it shouldn't matter. After all she was now his girlfriend so if she wanted a baby before she became barren in the next four years then they should be okay with it. They were in this together and if Himiko made a fit then she could just help Izuku make her pregnant. She did owe her entire life to her and Ochacho knew this was the one thing she wanted above all else with less time passing every day to make it happen. So what was nine months of pain and inconvenience compared to paying a life debt? She had enough money from Katsuki investing for her separately when they were together so she was set for life even with six possible extra people to care for. Besides Izuku knew Himiko was a killer in her past and let her cut him, so the possibility of him leaving if he found out she was an ex-PLA commander was insanely low. They could move a lot faster and nothing massive would go wrong. Her friend wouldn't be alone and be taken care of for the rest of her life while they raised their children together as their husband lived an easy life of making them happy. It would be better for the three of them if it happened so she wasn't wrong for thinking about this. She'd dedicate her life to them and build her new dream with these two. All it needed was more pleasure and then it could start. Taking a moment to analyze what she pictured, Ochacho decided to have a little courtesy towards the girl who gave her this possibility and wait until they were all together again to try the full plan. For now she had to make do with the boundaries the two set last night. Hey Zuki, can I ask you a favor and have you do that thing with your mouth again question mark and quat. Izuku blinked at the request, but gave a casual okay as he started to kiss his way down her torso and under the blanket, feeling his way around until he found it. Ochacho moaned and whimpered and cried in pleasure as she felt him work, it really had been far too long. She needed a lot more of this and if it only came from this pathetic loser and that demented bitch then she could live a very happy life. They were some rejected, pitiable degenerates who needed a strong hand to guide them and she had the will, devotion and money to make it happen. These two were her property now, just like Katsuki was before she failed him. Nobody even wanted these two, just like how nobody wanted Katsuki, so it was up to her to fix their lives. She had succeeded with Himiko so now she just needed a baby from Izuku and she could fix him just as much. Katsuki was beyond her help so she had to find other people in need of her and by some gift of heaven she did. She had found a man that she knew she could save and keep her best success safe and happy for the rest of her life and then their children could go out and help the world even more. She smiled when she thought of how her green-eyed, brown-haired babies would play with their yellow-eyed, green-haired siblings. Her mind was ripped back to reality when she felt her spine tingle and her belly warm as she grabbed the covers with a death grip once all the mounting tension inside her body released all at once. 
Izuku raised his head up from the blanket and gave her a look she knew deep inside her brain as he crawled over her shivering form. So perhaps she could do away with courtesy and just go to step two. Smiling, Ochacho spread her legs and grabbed his back, easing him into her grasp as she prepared to start, sensitivity be damned. It didn't take much to get him receptive and she could tell he was going to go for it if she said the right words, but as if to unjustly punish her despite all the good she's done for the world and the lifetime of good she was about to do for herself, Miko and Zuki, there came a phone call from the living room that had the idiot rushing out of bed to answer it. She was left alone in that room and it did not sit well with her at all. Every fear of loneliness and emptiness rose up and threatened to drown her as she stared at the flung open door. Come back, come the fuck back. She screamed in her head as a surge of fear-driven anger pounded in her heart. How dare he just walk away from her? From the gift she was about to make with him for Miko and the both of them? She knew best so why the fuck did he just? Calm down Uraka, Zuki was just going to answer the phone. That's probably Miko asking for them to come back to her apartment. This was a good thing, they just needed to head back and she could say a few words and then they could all start man and little miracles. She relaxed at the thought and smiled warmly as she got off the bed to walk into the living room. Looking ahead she saw Izuku talking on the phone to someone with the most uncomfortable face she'd seen on anyone for such a mundane thing. Hey Kachan dot 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 and quat. He smiled like a gun was put to his head. Oh, like right now question mark and quat. His knuckles whitened as he spoke. Well, I can make the time then dot and quat. There was real anger on his face now. Sure, I can be there in an hour dot and quat. The anger only grew when he responded. Great, see ya soon pal dot and quat. The call disconnected and he dropped his device with a shaking hand as he contained whatever fury was boiling inside him. Izuku looked at her standing there and most of the rage passed as he approached with open arms and an apologetic face. He hugged her for a good two minutes and spoke with a spiteful sigh. I got something private to deal with and I gotta handle it alone. I promise that tomorrow you, me and Himiko will do something great, but I need to get this done dot and quat. Confusion and fear struck the heroine as she grabbed his wrists in a panic. B but, what about what Himiko told you to do? You're supposed to spend the whole day with me and you're in no condition to leave. At least let me return the favor. Quat. Izuku grinned at her before he moved to gather his clothes and made his way to the bathroom. The man who her entire future depended on took over 15 minutes and when he stepped out she wanted to scream, but she didn't. Instead she stood there nude as the day she was born as this kind, generous, loving man kissed her and looked deeply into her eyes. I need to go, but I promise that tomorrow you, Himiko and I will have a great time and I'll make you two feel like the most special girls in the world. Okay Rosie question mark and quat. Ochacho nodded and kissed him one more time before he left out the front door and locked it. She knew this would work, that this was her path to happiness and fulfillment. It wasn't happening at her pace yet, but she knew the two that needed her would be like putty if she said the right words, promised the right things and gave them both all she had. Everything would be hers in the end. She only needed to be patient and then her paradise would become real. Izuku had never been so happy to be called back into the office. His manager had called him up last night saying they were swarmed with work and he needed to come and that his days off would be refunded until the rush was dealt with. Lucky, Ochako also had the same issue when she called both him and Himiko to apologize for not being able to spend time with them. Himiko still had a boatload of articles to write before her deadline which had been pushed up to next week so that also cleared him for a day at least. The workload was continuous, but nothing he couldn't turn out like clockwork. Moving some account numbers around, rechecking balances, signing forms stopping to breathe every so often. A usual busy day at the office that he threw himself headlong into, grateful to dissociate in the haze of paperwork as nothing more than a living machine. He didn't have to think about his home life or the nice clusterfuck he had gotten into literally. Bakugo was a weird, insistent dick as always but he bought dinner and didn't ask about his relationship which he almost thanked him for. Because he may hate the guy and he broke up with her years ago, Izuku still felt shame for what he did when the man who once loved her was right in front of him. Still he was a dick and Rosie belonged to him and Himiko now, so he can fuck off. Though he did take half of the money he gave him back and invested it under Izuku's name so there might be some more cash coming his way. But at the same time it was more to think about so deeper into work he went. Paper after paper was completed as he turned off the parts of his brain that dealt with anything not related to the task at hand while the world shrank away into the background and white noise filled his ears. Muttering the calculations and proper accounts the time flowed like ice and soon it was all there was aside from his computer screen. Then like the interference of a divine being he was brought out of his trace by a hand tapping his shoulder. Kenson was standing behind him with an exhausted face as the entire office was rapidly becoming empty as their co-workers flooded out. Looking at the clock he could see that it was time for their lunch break. Getting up without a word, Izuku followed behind the redhead to the break room and set himself next to him. His lunch was a box meal he picked up on the way and Tenson had some homemade fried chicken. Not caring either way with how hard they had to work in less than a half hour, the two set themselves to finish eating. 
Ten minutes later that necessity was done and the pair had twenty more to simply relax until the bell ushered them back. Staring at Wall Izuku lurched forward when he heard a ping from his phone. Opening it he saw a text message from Ochako. Hey Zuki, sorry about having to take a rain check on you and Miko. I'm sorry that my job got in the way, but I should be able to get off early and Himiko is still gonna be on that writing thing for a while, so how about we surprise her with something sweet? A cake maybe? Anyway, I just wanted to make sure you're alright since you were kinda upset yesterday and Miko needs her kisses too. Love you Dotanquat. Staring at the message Izuku was floored with guilt at how he had forgotten most of everything else in his work, but there was that saying of leaving your trouble at the door and quat. Thinking for a minute he shrugged as he responded. Hey Rosie, I'm happy to hear from you again. It's fine that you had to take care of stuff, you have a big job after all. Anyway I might be swamped for a while, but I'll try to be off by 8. As for that little reaction of mine, it was just some idiot I gotta be nice too. Aside from that I think Himiko would love some cake, but she won't be in the mood for us hanging around. Regardless, we should do something nice for her and if she isn't up for us, then you and I can hang out. Love you too btw. A minute passed and he got this text. I'll try to be off by 7 at the least, if I can't then could you come over to my place and keep me company? You can bring Miko and we can do stuff. Again he shrugged as the weight of his work weighed off in the distance. Sure, like you said we all need to put in effort to make this work and after tonight I'm going to need some cuddling. A thumbs up emoji came back once he hit the send button and that was all he needed to end the call. Stuffing the device in his pocket Izuku noticed tense and giving him a curious gaze. Was that your girlfriend question mark and quat? The quirkless man leaned in deeper into the back of his chair. Yes, what of it question mark and quat? The redhead kept his quizzical look. You've just been more, present recently. Honestly when the prez of the company took you up that elevator last week a lot of us thought you had left for greener pastures. Yet you come back in our darkest hour having more energy about yourself than in the entire two years I've known you. So logically I assumed you had to have something new in your life. Which raises the question of what this girl's like question mark and quat. He leaned forward and lowered his voice in a conspiratorial manner. Is she a mutant? Like one of those really weird looking ones question mark and quat. Izuku felt vaguely insulted by the assumption, but knew he probably would have dated a mutant if he didn't have those two. Lord knows one of those sorts gave him so much back then. Nah man, she isn't a mutant. She's... Baseline. Aside from that she's as sweet as can be. Quat. The fellow office drone nodded and sipped some water as he regarded Izuku with a more critical eye before dropping it. I'm glad you've got something good going for you. Personally, my life is kinda a mess since I got involved with my old girlfriend from college. We kept in touch since we graduated and she sorta forced me into a relationship after I stopped by to see her. We fooled around like old times except instead of calling it that she's been clinging to me. Not that I mind, but dealing with her and my family and the job, it's a bit much. Quat. Izuku shrugged as he downed some of his own water. A, hey, so long as she makes you feel loved then the hassle is worth it. Trust me when I say this, some hardship is better than being alone so long as she isn't abusive or cheating. Because if you have nobody at all, that can get to be a very dark place. Quat. Tenson studied him for a moment and suddenly glowed with concern. You all right question mark and quat. Izuku smiled at his former misery. I am now. Quat. There would have been more to say between the two co-workers, but the bell rang and they had to return to the chains of their desk. The rest of the day dragged on in a free flow of nothing as Izuku continued to punch away at the numbers, his voice bouncing off his ears as he redid the math and piled through the things demanded of them. He never stopped to ask, never hesitated as he went about it, the man simply absorbed himself in his task. Then a ring came from his phone that made him detach from his computer and see the world around him. The office was empty and he was the only soul in the room. The automatic lights had flipped off all around him, leaving him a shroud of darkness that his workstation kept at bay. Had he really worked that long again? Pulling out his phone he could see the time was 8 in the afternoon and that the person calling was Ochako. Answering it, Izuku paused for a moment as he stepped up to stretch. Hey Rosie, everything alright? Question mark and quat. A bubbly tone filled the dead room and suddenly Izuku felt far better as the woman chased away the weight of his body with her voice. Hey Zuki, everything's fine. I just got off my shift a little bit ago and wanted to check up on you. Do you mind meeting me at this coffee house question mark and quat. A text with a location pinned to it filled the top of the screen as Izuku went about closing everything up at his desk. Sure, I could go for something sweet. Anyway, how was work, or you are not up to talking about it question mark and quat. The heroine had a tired tint to her voice that signified how much her career was on her shoulders that worried the man as he listened. I've had to deal with that shit all day, right now I'd rather just meet up with you and Miko and forget it for a while dot and quat. Shutting his computer off after logging out and sorting his paperwork, Izuku made his way to the door and clocked out with the phone still in his hand. I'm more than happy to oblige you my dear, but as for Himiko, knowing her she's not going to be in the mood for company. Quat. Ochako waved away the concern with her voice as Izuku made his way out of the building. That's fine, 
Miko was always a hard ass at times. We can hang out for a few hours before crashing at her place. Still think we should get her a treat or something. And quad. He shrugged as he entered the streets, careful to be mindful of everything around him with a tight grip on his device. Yeah, but before that is there anything else going on that you want? Anything I can do for you? Question mark and quad. A far softer tone came into the girl's voice that made him feel warm inside. No, no Zuki, I don't need anything. Just spend a little time with me is all I ask. In fact let me cover the bill when we get there. Okay greenie question mark and quad. Blush filled his cheeks as Izuku felt the warmth spread through him at the merest sound of her happiness. You got it Rosie, I'll be there when I can dot and quad. He was sure she was smiling with those cute birthmarks jumping to the edge of her cheeks. Sure thing, I'll be waiting inside. Love you Zuki dot and quad. A smile took over his face when he heard that. It was nice to hear someone, anyone, say they loved him even if it wasn't Himiko. Love you too, see you in a bit dot and quad. They ended the call and Izuku made his way to the train station. Taking a seat near the rear of the cart while keeping an eye on his GPS, he couldn't help but to wonder at the state of his life. Here he was a few years from 30 with a woman he loved above all else and another woman who was, something to him. Something good and fuzzy, but still. Then there was the fact he was doing hero work now, granted as a sidekick, but he was still doing it. Along with how Katsuki was trying to be a part of his life again which would bring an unlimited amount of problems with how his life was now. Izuku didn't know what to make of it. Yet he knew it was better than he could have thought. His life was still worth living and he knew would have had any of this if he had taken that step off those bridges. He shuddered at the thought of him simply leaping off the bridge that night while Himiko was a few feet away, either of them never knowing each other. Thank the god of luck and fortune he waited a few minutes to talk with her at the time, otherwise he'd never get any of this. Izuku paused for a moment, should he tell Ochako this? Why should he? They only knew each other for a few days so far, why should he burden her with that knowledge? Yet, she was his partner alongside Himiko so shouldn't he be open about that issue? He had done the same to Aki one night and that changed his life for a while. Though he knew there'd never be another woman like her anywhere, even Himiko wasn't so, wonderful. Putting the past away for now, he thought more on the idea. He wasn't that low anymore and he doubted he would be ever again so long as he had something to live for. Yet the fact that your new partner revealed one of his darkest secrets on what is basically a first date is a major red flag. Why didn't he know how to do this? Oh right because his dad ran out on him when he was four and he never had to formally court a woman since Himiko forced herself on him and Aki practically marked him the second they met on the track field. Thinking more on it, he decided to drop the idea and focus on something more pleasant to talk about. Maybe he should ask about her quirk? He already knew everything about it though. Her parents? No one would want to discuss that when they're relaxing. Her interests? Was that too bland a statement? How much did he know about Ochako as a person to begin with? Hearing a ding from the cart speaker as it rolled into the next station, Izuku chose to try and wing it because otherwise he'd be too paralyzed to act. Following the map he arrived at the coffee house. It was a national chain one that cropped up after the reconstruction. One he knew belonged to the Uraka Corporation. Looking at the window he saw the daughter herself walk into view as she was sitting at a table with a bored expression staring at the door expectedly. Taking the sign he entered the shop and was greeted by Ochako's dull expression lighting up at his arrival. The two grinned at each other as he took the opposite chair with a strange feedback loop of giddiness and joy that didn't feel right and yet did at the same time. Good to see you again, sorry I took a while getting here with the train and all that dot and quad. Ochako threw a hand out to end his concerns while still having that adorable smile. Ah, it doesn't matter, you're here now. Anyway, work treating you all right question mark and quad. Izuku shrugged as he began to relax into the chair, glad to be away from the troubles of his life yet again. Rather not say since there's nothing to talk about. I went there. Did my work till my shift ended and that was it. Same old stuff as they claim. What about you? Anything of note question mark and quad. The brunette mused on her day for a few minutes and shrugged. Same old, same old, just like you. Got off a few hours ago with nothing much to do other than wait for the next day. Honestly I was looking forward to seeing you and Himiko again since now the both of you are the most exciting part of my day given how I'm usually just stuck inside or hanging out at a bar dot and quad. Izuku listened and found himself more than a little prideful at how she regarded him. Yet he was at a loss as to how to carry the conversation even when going off the cuff. What did he even want to talk about? What did he like? Thinking on it more he found his oldest interest bubbling up. So going completely off topic, what do you think about quirks? Like just your general thoughts on them question mark and quad. Ochako considered it for a few minutes and answered matter of factly. Quirks are, interesting in how they shape a person. Their entire identity as a human being is usually so closely tied with their abilities that it gets hard to distinguish the two. I mean my entire livelihood, my career. The way people have regarded me since I was four, why I know the people I do and the things I've experienced, it was all because of my quirk. If my genetics were a little screwy or my quirk developed into something else then I wouldn't have the life I have, I don't think I'd even be the same person. And quad. 
She continued as a bit of rant was building up. Like there are some people with weak quirks that have no practical use even in an illegal sense and people with bad mutant type quirks that practically guarantee discrimination which leads to a far high rate of crime amongst them. Then you have people whose quirks are like Miko's that can literally make them insane. But then there's people like me and the rest of my old graduating class who hit the genetic lottery dot and quat. Oh Chaco kept going. It's like humanity has been cursed and blessed with things that can make an individual literally irreplaceable to society in a way knowledge or brawn or any basic skill can't, while at the same time make their lives infinitely worse. I mean there is this one girl my class rescued from some yakuza back in the day and she had the ability to literally rewind time on any living thing she touched if she thought about the number in her head dot and quat. Pulling out her phone Izuku was confronted by a group picture of what had to be Ochako's graduating class judging by how she, Kachan, Ashido, Shoji, Ojiro and a lot of other faces he recognized from news articles were centered around a Christmas tree. Sitting in the front was a rather odd looking girl with a small horn coming from her head. The government took note of how the villains had used her blood to make quirk cancelling bullets so they took the tech and reverse engineered it by using cloned samples of her blood to make more of them, along with the rewind shots. Those things have literally revolutionized medicine and law enforcement to a decree not seen since practically the industrial revolution and the thing about it is that they plan to never run out because they just keep making copies of her femurs and using the marrow to manufacture her blood on an industrial scale dot and quad. Putting the phone away she went on with her rant. This poor girl had her entire life ruined because of her quirk, she had accidentally killed one of her parents when her quirk emerged so her mother abandoned her which led to those yakuza using her for their plans and us barely being able to save her. All because of her ability, but on the flip side she is literally one of the most important people in history now and she lives in the lap of luxury without a worry in the world. Quat. Izuku felt his old intellect buzz at the information and asked what was on his mind when his lover stopped to catch her breath. You mind me asking where she is now? Question mark and quat. Ochako paused to recall and found the answer somewhere in her brain. She's living with Lemillion and his wife, the guy adopted her the second he was able. Only right since he was the one who saved her from those monsters. Though he was still shooken up after he had to shoot that red beak wearing fucker through the head after knocking out the plague doctor and grabbing his gun. So there's still problems but everything turned out okay for them. Granted the big guy really stepped back from the hero thing for a while, so take it for what you will dot and quat. She eyed the man for a few seconds once she was finished and sucked in air through her teeth as her own curiously boomed. Hey Zuki, not to be rude or anything, but, would you mind telling what life was like for you with being quirkless question mark and quat. Instantly she doubled back on the question and looked absolutely ashamed and flustered at how it sounded. Ah crap, I'm sorry, I and quat. Izuku raised a hand to calm her and remained relaxed as he likely could be in public. He didn't really care about the fact of his disability, he had a lifetime to get used to it. Besides, some catharsis would be nice. It isn't a big deal, most don't want to hear my story anyway. And quat. He saw some memories of his past and had some of his comfort die as he remembered the trials of his life. Sitting up for a brief second to clear his head Izuku looked at the woman who was the one of the closest people he had in his life right now and spoke. From my experience at least, being without a quirk isn't as big a deal as being a mutant since you can hide the difference whereas they can't. People treat you pretty normally so long as you don't make a big deal out of it. But usually the discrimination comes from a place of pity or superiority. I've had more people feel sorry for me than wanna mess with me so that asshole was an exception. Don't get me wrong it does have its downsides, but it's minor all things considered dot and quat. He continued to be drawn into the past and kept speaking almost absent-mindedly. For me the biggest thing was isolation, but that could be because I'm quirkless or because I just didn't talk to most of anyone once I entered high school. And quat. Now Ochako raised an eyebrow at him in a stern disbelief. You mean to tell me that for your entire academic life you never had one friend? Now that has to be bullshit. And quat. He pursed his lips and thought back to some of the better days of his existence despite the pain. Pushing it back he answered as best he could. Okay, so I did have one friend back in my day. We had met on the track field one day when I just wanted to run and when I finished, she walked up to me and started talking. Long story short, she convinced me to join the track team after she beat me in a race and we kinda stuck to each other like glue dot and quat. The heroine softened her eyes ever so slightly as she took note of the emotion in the back of his gaze. Do you guys still keep in touch question mark and quat. Instantly all the mirth and mellow that was inside him vanished as he seemed to dry up at the question like it had harmed him. No, we don't apostrophe t dot and quat. She pressed on anyway in spite of the change of mood. Did anything happen question mark and quat. He inhaled deeply for a moment and spoke flatly. The calamity happened. We were supposed to, I was supposed to answer an important question she gave me that night, but I wanted to think on it instead of acting on blind passion so I decided to wait until the next day to work up the courage to say yes. Only for everything to get turned into a slaughterhouse the day I meant to accept her. Afterwards when the smoke had cleared and I actually decided to go look for her, I was too busy making sure I wasn't in poverty to do so. Now I'm afraid dot 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 and quat. 
He shook his head and began to smile again. Ah what does it matter? She's alive and well living her own life and I have you guys. Sure I have no idea about her other than she's above ground, but enough about that. Tell me something about you dot and quat. Caught a little off guard by the mood swing she had to regain her mental footing before answering and referenced her mental catalog of life. Well, I grew up on old pre-emergence animations, old Disney and Miyazaki stuff. It was all my parents could afford when I was growing up so I always had this thing for art. I even wanted to be an artist for a while before I realized that being a crime fighter was more profitable. Quat. Izuku squinted at the idea, it did seem to fit her rather well for what it was worth. Did you just stop once you got into UA? And Quat. Ochako nodded. Yeah, having to juggle so much didn't leave me with a lot of free time to pursue it. Not that I'm complaining or anything, I love doing what I do so long as it doesn't eat my life up completely. Really I never put any serious effort into it so it wasn't like I missed anything. Besides, I still have years ahead of me and it doesn't take a lot to hold a pencil dot and quat. He considered it for a bit and found a spark of anger within him at the thought. She had done more than most people to set the world right so she deserved to pursue her passions, even if they were lesser to her. The anger died quickly as a rather touchy question found its way to his brain. You ever think of retiring from the game altogether and living the rest of your life by some Swiss mountainside so you can paint question mark and quat? She pursed her lips at the concept. I've never really thought about retiring from the industry at least not until I have kids. People need my help and I know the next generation can fill in for me, but I still feel some obligation. Plus, painting in some lonely mountainside cabin isn't what I want to spend the rest of my life on. I have enough cash to retire, but I want to be a mother and a wife. Quat. Izuku was suddenly feeling a tad uncomfortable about the certainty in how she said it. Not that it isn't a bad goal or anything, but mind me asking why you're so hellbent on this? You're still in your mid-twenties. Quat. There was a glare in those hazel eyes that made even Himiko's domineering side seem less with how much force was burning in them. That's exactly why I have to get my chance soon. My family has a history of infertility, that's why we have these birthmarks on our cheeks. It causes our eggs to die rapidly due to the amount of blood flowing to our ovaries after we hit 30. My grandma always talked about how the birthmarks would get pale when we can't have kids anymore and she was right when I saw my aunt and my mom. Quat. The force in her eyes grew as she stared at Izuku with what had to be a near lifetime of worry. They could only have kids before the dead age and even then they both had to try really hard to get pregnant. That's why I don't have any cousins because my aunt just didn't try hard enough with my uncle. Hell, my mom told me one time about how she had to handcuff my dad to the inquat. She halted when she realized where this was going. Glaring at him, the first and only daughter of the Uraka family continued to speak. You get the idea. I don't have a lot of time left to make my dream a reality so excuse me if I seem a bit pushy. Inquat. Not wanting to touch this snake with a 20-foot pole Izuku laughed and diverted his partner's view towards the store counter. I could go for a cookie right now, how about you question Mark and Quat? Ochako relaxed herself and got up to move to the cashier with Izuku passively behind. What do you want question Mark and Quat? Two donuts and a horrifying silence later, Izuku suggested they go see Himiko since that was the one thing he could think of that would be brought back to the topic at hand. This was not how he saw the night turning and if anything he felt even more strange. He did want kids, he knew that at least, but he didn't know this woman that well and there were a million other things he had to figure out. He didn't want to outright say no because it was a chance if Himiko still refused him, as awful as it was to admit. Yet he wasn't going to just outright agree to it when he only knew the girl for four days. Taking a seat on the tram Izuku wrapped an arm around her and felt Ochako grip his hand tightly. Not one to give too much of a care, he leaned into it and enjoyed the warmth of being near her as they arrived at the station. A few turns into the rougher side of town and a pit stop at a local bakery later they arrived at Himiko's apartment complex and soon, her place. Taking a knock at the door, the two were faced by a very ragged, tired Himiko who had even heavier bags under her eyes. She didn't smile upon seeing them, only wordlessly ushering them in before setting herself on the couch. Locking the door behind them Izuku approached the blonde while Ochako put the bag with the cake on the table. Himiko was unresponsive as he proceeded to wrap himself around her whispering and kissing lightly into her ear which earned a glare of mild annoyance. He briefly turned his eyes towards the other girl and motioned with a finger for help. Taking the hint, Ochako moved herself to the left of Himiko and wrapped her arms around the villainess. The three said nothing for a minute, letting the slasher just relax while they each held everyone. Then she spoke up and it sounded rough as ever. Take me to the bedroom. Quat. Not missing a beat Izuku stood up with her in his arms bridal style like she weighed nothing and did as asked, opening the door and setting Himiko on the red covers before turning back to grab Ochako. He was a lot more forceful when moving the brunette, but it wasn't much of an issue. Taking the right side, Izuku put himself next to her and nuzzled into her chest without a word. The heroine took up residence on her back and let her hands and close tight around her belly. Putting a hand to both, Himiko kissed Izuku's forehead and caressed the hand over her stomach with a sigh. I'm sorry. 
I've had a shit day and I'm in an even worse mood. I finally met the deadline, but I had to power through the night so I haven't really slept. Dot and quad. Oh Chaco chimed in with a condescending tone that lessened the pain in the air. No wonder you're so crabby right now, Miko you need to sleep. Dot and quad. The blonde rolled her eyes and turned her head towards Izuku who still had that ever-present look of adoration in his soul when he came forward and kissed her, much to her mild annoyance. Sitting up he reached over and grabbed Ochako by the cheeks as he then kissed her as well, to Himiko's slight jealousy. Flipping herself over she mimicked her original lover and pecked the brunette on the lips. Smiling at the events, Izuku shifted himself over to the other side of the mattress and situated himself behind Ochako as he started to kiss and suckle at her neck. He made eye contact with Himiko who followed suit and began to do the same to the girl's front. It wasn't an overtly erotic thing, no further moves were made to push the envelope. The best thing it could be compared to was a game between the two where they tried to leave the most marks on their lover. To Izuku's credit Himiko was far more relaxed than when they first arrived and she was even giggling as he reached over from behind to occasionally kiss her as well. The one being subjected to this was a different story as she eventually had enough and spoke up with a hand on both of their foreheads. Can we just go to sleep? If this keeps going on I won't be able to go to work tomorrow with how pick marked my skin will look. And quad. Izuku grinned mischievously as he trapped her from behind with his arms locking snugly around her belly. Would you believe us if we said no question mark and quad. Ochako shook her head at his words and Himiko followed Izuku's example by crushing herself to the heroine. Putting her head on the anti-gravity user's left shoulder while he took the right, Himiko spoke up with her voice carrying the most weight. I agree with Chiki, we all need to sleep and wasting time teasing her isn't going to help any one of us. So Zuzu stop playing around with her and Chiki switch out with me, I wanna be in the middle. And quad. Izuku withdrew his head from the brunette's shoulder and stared at the blonde. It was a testing gaze as he tightened his hold on the girl's belly which was met by a slight air thrown his way. Eventually after two minutes he reluctantly let go and latched onto Himiko like a koala when she moved to the center of the bed. There was a murmur of annoyance as he moved and grabbed and nuzzled, but Himiko made no attempt to stop him. Ochako did much the same as she grabbed the comforter below them and brought it up while moving along the villainous back and putting her arms around both her and Izuku. Not sure on what to do at this point, she relied on her last time with the two of them and rested her head somewhere on Miko's torso. The blonde sighed and raised up her hands and clapped which turned the light off, casting them all in a comforting darkness. Good night you two dot and quat. The pair of crime stoppers said nothing in response as they languished under the warmth of their bodies and before long they had all fallen asleep, drifting away from the world and preparing for the next day. Of all the things Rikido was expected to deal with in the days since he had to handle Bakugo's unstable ass, his classmates showing up at his agency was not one of them. He was completely alone to handle not only Shoji and Ojiro, but Ida as well. Granted they were better guests than their resident bipolar ignition switch, but it still irked him. Yeah he was low on the totem pole, but it was still his place dammit. Though he was begrudgingly happy for the company since Izuku wasn't due to show up for another couple of days. It was a lot like being in high school again and sharing the dorms with these knuckleheads so he wasn't complaining too much. A hot mug of cocoa in each hand and his famous pound cake didn't hurt anything either. Yet of course that five-limb smartass just had to ruin the calm like he always did. So where exactly is Mop Head? Shouldn't he be on call since he's your sidekick? Question mark and quat. Rikido glared with slight annoyance as he reclined into his seat, not caring as much since their shifts were over. His uniform was off and he had washed off the grime a while ago. I don't know and I don't ask, he's got a life to live and judging by how Bakugo acted when he wasn't here last week I don't blame him. And quat. The martial arts hero pouted as he lifted some free weights with his tail in the corner of the room to kill time. Neither do I, Bakugo is a hard case on a good day. I couldn't imagine growing up with that guy, much less when he kept talking and obsessing over you for almost 10 years. But don't you want to know the story behind Deku? I'm telling you we could win so many bets, Hell I made a bet with Mineta back in high school that it was Bakugo's old boyfriend since he constantly muttered it like the person sucked his dick. And quat. A pen click and a sound like a cold start on a V8 engine boomed through the room as Ida glared at the blonde with his usual uptight personality that had only gotten worse since the war. Ojiro, oh, need I remind you that we are heroes? We don't heedlessly pry into the lives of other people for petty gain. What we should be doing is contacting this Deku person so that we could perhaps figure out a way to help Bakugo overcome his demons. We owe it to him for ending the war and saving the world, so if this person can help us repay that act then so be it. Dot and quad. At this point the multi-arm user cut in, feeling more than a little, concerned for the absent newcomer since he knew a previous victim of abuse when he saw one even if they hit it well and judging by how he stormed out of Toshi's back then there was clearly a lot of bad emotion associated with the name. Look, let's just get Midoriya's view on the matter. There may be the chance he doesn't even want to help, much less know how. We can't be putting everything on him. And quad. The men all stared at each other in unison and nodded at the idea as Rikido spoke up with his voice sounding gruff and tense. Alright, I'll call him, 
but just lay off any of the weird questions. And quad. The sugar hero got his mobile in his palm, found the man's contact, tapped the call icon and put it on speakerphone. Dial tone filled the air for a few seconds before it connected and Izuku answered. He sounded groggy and disoriented, like he had just woken up. Hello question mark and quad. Rikido smiled softly at hearing his sidekick again and held the phone in his palm while the others were dead silent. Hey mop head, it's Ricky. I just wanted to check on you a bit after that whole mess with Bakugo a while back. He called you something he always talked about back in high school and I was wondering if you could explain why said you were Deku since old boom boy hasn't been in the best of places recently. Quat. A scowl could practically be felt from the other end as Izuku answered. Look boss, with all due respect, I'd rather not explain that bit of my history. Now do you need me to come and question Mark and Quat? The hero tried to keep a pleasant demeanor about himself and in the sidekick's defense it was rather late. No man, I just wanted to and Quat. He was cut off when another voice came through the speaker that sounded even more groggy. One that he recognized instantly. Zuki, turn your phone off and go back to sleep. You're waking Miko and me. And Quat. That was Uraka. Why was she at Midoriya's place? And who the hell was Miko? He turned his head to look at his fellow heroes and everyone one of them shared in his silent astonishment as they stared at the device. Then there came another voice, one that none of them recognized. It was Femine, slim, quiet and soft yet possessed an authority that sounded out of place for such a delicate sounding woman. If you two keep talking and moving around then that's gonna wake me up even more. Zuzu, shut the fucking thing off and cheeky, just choke him back to sleep and put him the middle dot and quad. A murmur of annoyance came from Midoriya as he spoke to the man who woke him up and likely put him in an unenviable situation. I'll talk to you later. And quad. The call ended and the sugar hero found himself with more questions than he started with. Though after a moment the initial shock had worn off and he felt far more adjusted. The same was said of the other three heroes who just shrugged at the news. Ojiro, always one for attention, broke the silence. Looks like Little Miss Princess actually was trying to snag some of that green booty. Can't say I'm too surprised with how she followed Bakugo around for so long. It seems like she has a thing for damaged goods. And quad. Shoji followed up when he crushed a soda can that brought all eyes on him. Who cares? They're consenting adults. If Uraka is having a relationship with the new guy, leave it be. We have better things to do, like making sure Bakugo isn't on the verge of a mental breakdown again. And quad. The martial arts hero gave him a look as he dropped the barbell. We might need the prince's help if Boom Boy actually is going off the deep end. Finding out she's screwing the newbie, especially if he's this Deku guy, isn't going to make it better. Plus, wasn't there another girl there or was I hallucinating that third voice question mark and quad? Shoji studied him for a moment, but he was cut off before he could start by the far more successful member of their ragtag trio. Ida clicked his pen closed and pocketed it as he glared at the far wall with a sigh. He pushed his glasses to the top of his nose and spoke in the class rep voice he had refined over half a decade of saving lives. Only it wasn't the calm yelling accompanied by flying knife hands. Instead he spoke at a normal volume and let his words speak for themselves. Our objective right now isn't to look into our comrades' personal lives. If Uraka is in a relationship or not, it isn't our concern, we aren't teenagers anymore. What we need to do is understand Katsuki's sudden change in behavior. If he does become dangerous to himself or god forbid the public then that would be our greatest failing as heroes and as the man's former classmates. Quad. Ojiro snorted as he looked at the speedster's stone-faced expression. Or we could just shoot him with a quirk cancelling bullet if he does go haywire and get him institutionalized until he's mentally well enough to retire, preferably without that cheating ass quirk of his dot and quad. Ida glared at him as he began to twirl his pen around habitually. We aren't doing that if we can help it. Like it or not, Katsuki Bakugo is our friend and we owe him a great deal and we will do what we can to save him. Besides, he's already proven he's fast enough to dodge bullets with his quirk dot and quad. Now Shoji came into the talk with a reluctant pain in his voice. I still think we should have just had his quirk removed via injection after that first incident he had after the war. After all, we almost unanimously voted for it. I know I did. And quad. The tail mutant flicked his extra limb at the more unusual hero with a mocking hurt in his voice. Yeah, we all did, every single one of us, even Uraka. He was just becoming more and more unstable after he blew that hand creep away. Kept seeing demons in every corner before blasting them with that quirk. But the Kamizan had to have their fucking way didn't they? Did they care that the guy who lost the most because of the war, one of the guys who saved the entire fucking world, was becoming more paranoid with each passing day question mark and quad. The blonde threw his arms up to exclaim his mood. Fuck no. They wanted a gun to point at the bad guys since their old ones broke. The Kamjin never gave a fuck about Bakugo and he bought into it. Even Uraka begged him to put the cape down before he ended up killing himself, but he refused. That poor fucking girl did everything she could before she had to break up with him over it. I say just leave him quirkless with enough money to live out the rest of his days in peace and comfort. Better that than him ruining his mind and reputation further. Quad. Rikido glared at the shorter man from his chair. 
Is there a point to this shit you're saying? Unless any of us get elected to a seat on the council then it's just a waste of air. Quat. Ojiro raised his arms up in surrender. Just wanted to vent. Quat. The multi-armed mutant took center stage as he began to pace around the dirty tile floor of the agency. Alright, so we can't take Bakugo's quirk away. Has anyone here tried talking with him? Making a phone call at least question mark and quat. The sweets hero rolled his eyes at the statement as if they already didn't know the answer to that. You know exactly how that goes, any of us try to reach out and boom boy just growls and hangs up. He's like a feral dog at this point, as sad as it is to say dot and quat. Eat amused on something for a moment before looking at the bulkier street level hero with a quick snap of his fingers. Ricky, didn't you say something about a mixer being held somewhere? Why not drag Bakugo to one of those? He's bound to find someone to balance him out and maybe help him recover. And quat. Again the martial arts hero snorted before the sugar hero could speak. You know I'd say there's no chance in hell for Katsuki fucking Bakugo to find someone willing to put up with his shit and suck his dick, but then I remember he's famous. Lots of chicks love angry, famous, rich assholes so I say we go for it. And quat. The other three heroes nodded in agreement and made the nearly professional baker groan at the idea of taking such a massive bag of anger, narcissism and bad attitude anywhere. But he sucked it up because he supposed he did care in a way for the bastard. Alright, but let's bring Midoriya along to make it go smoother. Yeah he might be taken, but if Bakugo is willing to step out into the public light to see him then he might be willing to accept our scheme. Besides it isn't anything more than a party, it doesn't mean Mophead has to screw anyone. Quat. Ida gave a thumbs up to the plan after writing a rough draft down on his notepad and pulling out his cell phone. Good, at the very least it's a plan that doesn't involve breaking the law and the trust of our friend. Now this mixer is two days away if my notes are correct, so at the time I want us all to be there just in case Bakugo starts getting erratic for everyone's safety. Meanwhile, I don't want any of us to act out of the ordinary. I already had contact with a few others from our class so this should go smoothly. All we need is Midoriya's cooperation and it should be good to go. And quat. The sweets hero pursed his lips and stared at the ceiling for a moment as he hoped Fade and his people's skills would work here, because if not, he had a sneaking suspicion that they were all in big trouble and no one would like the outcome from it. Himiko wanted to reach out and cut her own throat as she heard the walls creak. She was alone again and she loathed it. She wanted to drown in her lover's affection, but Zuzu and Chiki left to go do something, so she was by herself for the first time in what felt like forever. She hated the silence, the emptiness of her home. She wanted to feel Zuzu's being just breathe and jump and talk to fill the air or even Chiki to mildly berate her like a loving sister. But they were gone for now and she had to wait in this dumpy little apartment for the two people who made her life worth a damn. She had half a mind to call them up, just to hear them talk, but she didn't. Instead Himiko got off her now empty bed and turned to her dresser. It was a pain to hide all her knives from Chiki, yet that wasn't what she wanted at the moment. Pulling the bottom drawer out, the blonde reached in to grab an old cardboard box no bigger than a human head. There was a tripod next to it, so she took that as well and set it up. Going to double check that the front door and her bedroom door was locked, Himiko came back and opened the box. Inside was an ancient Super 8 video camera and a few videotapes, most of which were blank. Testing the power switch she found that the battery still worked so she flipped the eject button on the side and put one of the blank tapes inside the device. Centering it on herself, Himiko tried to make herself seem less unkempt, but gave up halfway. It wasn't like anyone else would see this. Breathing deeply, she relaxed herself as she got up to hit the record button. The emergence of a red light told her it was rolling, so she began to speak. Today is December 18, 2126 and I'm Himiko, Ito. I'm making this as a series of video diaries to monitor my life and vent out my thoughts. This is video log number 126 if I remember right. And quat. She sighed for a moment as she moved to sit cross-legged on the bed. So it's been 5 days since Ochako pushed her way into my relationship with Izuku and frankly it still pissed me off that I have to share some of his attention. But on the other hand I'm a little grateful to Chiki since she can take care of him if something goes wrong between me and him. That being said, I rather like having her in bed with me and him. Izuku can't get enough of her chubby body and I'm more than excited to have her screw with me. Well, that and how Izuku manages to do everything he can to make us feel good. And quat. A despondent gloom came over the blonde as she continued to stare into the camera. I'm still feeling like shit for not letting Zuzu take me. He wants me like nothing else, he loves me and does everything in his power to please me, but I can't just spread my legs for him? Of course not, because if I drop my guard then he might find out who I was and leave. The man I gave my last shred of innocence to would be gone from my life forever. And quat. She smiled maniacally as she thought about the previous events of the week. The fucking bastard outright said he wanted to marry me, even after I abused the fuck out of him. I slapped him, bit him, sliced him up and drank his blood and he still said those things. It wasn't an empty promise either, he meant it and I could see it in his eyes that he did. Half of the time he'll cling to me and just give me every bit of passion he can and, I like it. I really, 
Really like it even if I won't say it to his face. And quad. More turmoil played out on her soul as she stared into the camera. I honestly can't imagine my life without him anymore. Sure he's goofy and gross and a wet nap of a person who isn't good at anything other than maybe pleasuring me, but he's mine. He's been nothing but loyal and kind and there hasn't been much to change that even with Cheeky around. He always makes time for me and lets me have my way with him. Then his blood, how would I even begin to describe it question mark and quad. She knew a rosy tint had come over her cheeks and she was fighting to hold back a grin. It has this good, healthy aroma that's always loaded with copper and iron. Half the time I can still smell it on my breath even a day later if I take only a single gulp and the taste, it changes with what he eats, but it's always so sweet and tart. Almost like pomegranates or a dark sweet dot and quat. She giggled childishly to herself as she reached to grab a pillow and wrap her body around it as a tingle ran through her. She knew she was losing herself, but right now was safe. Zuzu was with Cheeky and away from her and even then they weren't having their fun so she could let her fantasies out through words. Better than letting them build up until she snapped. Though, so long as she had fun with Zuzu and kept her diet up to date then she wouldn't have any massive psychosis. Still she shivered as she recalled finally getting to cut him. The wonderful fear and apprehension on his handsome face as she pulled out the razor, god she could still feel how her hands sweated as she brought over his skin. But the thing that made her squeal was how he gave himself to her. He offered himself to her whims and tastes without much hesitation and she didn't blame him. It meant Zuzu was right in the head enough that she wouldn't have to worry about him egging her on or demanding worse things like those people who might be called her exes. Granted the image of him with those thick, heavy leather binds around his arms while he waited for her on the bed just made some part of her brain buzz as she had a pocket knife in her hand that was slick with just enough blood to get her really excited. Himiko kept giggling to herself and the recording camera as she began to roll around on the mattress as a strange throbbing stung at the roots of her teeth. She could feel her womanhood warm up at the increasing catalog of memories of how she had tasted his blood and saw that wonderful expression as he leaned in to escape the pain. He treated her in return and just made a situation that already made her feel good a thousand times better. Tricky little bastard just loved slipping his fingers in her didn't he? He loved her, needed her, needed the things she did to him, didn't he? He was just as fucked up as her so it was perfect. They were perfect for each other. She started to babble and coo little nonsense as she lost more of herself, rolling around with a slight tremor to her body as her mind went elsewhere. Useless little bastard, you horrible waste of a man, who loves you? Who loves you? Who? Not your bitch whore of a mother. Nobody loves you, not a damn soul because you're a worthless piece of garbage, but you don't need anyone else. Not when you have me around, not when you have your mommy. I'll beat you and cut you and slap you, just like my mommy did, but your mind dot and quat. She went on in her delirium as she let go of the pillow and began to curl up into a ball. Drool was threatening to drip off her top pair of fangs as she kept smiling as more heat was coming from the very center of her core. You're a worthless little fucker that everyone hates, they despise you Zuzu. But I don't, nope. Nope, nope. I wanna mess you up and see that pretty blood leak out of such nice little cuts while you just hold on to me. I know you wanna put a baby in me, I can smell on you most days and I see it in your eyes. You wanna take me and make me so happy, I know you do dot and quat. Her breath was coming out ragged and hot as her heart pounded at the thoughts in her head that made her keep spasming. I might let you if you ask nicely, if you beg in the right way then I'll give you myself. But it's a bum deal for you isn't it? Who'd wanna marry a monster? You do you cute fucker, you do dot and quat. Reaching over to the pillow as her hand brushed against it in her motions, Himiko sunk her teeth in as those sharp fangs effortlessly punched through the fabric before she pulled away carefully, fully expecting blood to fill her mouth. She kept laughing and giggling like she was a teenager again. I love you, you big baby. You useless, dumb, rejected, waste of space, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And quad. The voice was quiet and mouse-like as her excitement constrained her vocal cords, but it faded even more intensity as she spoke. She wanted blood, preferably his blood, her Zuzu's crimson. Himiko felt her forearm slip into her maw as she began to heave heavy breaths to keep laughing and cool the heat that was making her cheeks practically glow red. Her brain traveled to the image of Uraka and that beautiful, chubby body that looked handcrafted to rear children. Some of the heat died and with it came a spark of lust-driven anger at the interruption. She didn't want to cut Cheeky, she hadn't for a long time, even if it was from a place of affection. Her old crush had withered away, but she certainly didn't wish ill on the woman and she had little problem sharing her baby with her after all she did for her and suffered. Yet soon more heat came back as the smell of blood teased her nostril and her mind. If Cheeky wanted to have her man, her only thing of worth, then she needed to know her place. Oh, she would lay a hand on the woman, why would she when Uraka was too strong to break unless it shifted to actual torment? No, as Himiko began to touch and grab at herself as this high brought on a sweat, she couldn't stop seeing that bitch's face as she took Zuzu with a knife in hand. She would push the man who adores her to the floor and claim him right in front of the heroine before letting him finish right inside her. 
Then while Zuzu was awash in the afterglow, she'd kiss him and drag the blade over the length of his chest. Nothing deep enough to touch an artery, but certainly enough to leave a scar, especially as she dragged her tongue in the weeping shallow in his body. Then and only then would she even consider letting that so touch her Zuzu. If Chiki wanted his baby then alright. They could fuck, but only after she had him and got to play with them both. She didn't want to mark the brunette, she wasn't good enough for that much of her love anymore and she didn't want it either. No, her body, her darkened soul and every little demented tick she had belonged to Zuzu now. He wanted it and thus she would give only to him. Though she felt a sharp pain as the fear of them both running away together due to her not having a baby with Zuzu as well simmered through her fantasies, but it faded soon enough as she kept imagining what it felt like to give herself to him and mark him forever. If that fat bitch wants my Zuzu, then I'll whip and whip her until she learns what's best. Then I'll tie her up like I taught her and I'll show exactly what'll happen. We'll use her till she breaks again and again and again since Zuzu deserves something nice. Maybe if she taught him right, he'd nick her or bite her. Another wave of heat came as she saw Ochako's skin with burning red marks as Izuku was covered in fresh little cuts and bites when he flogged her with his own belt, all the while she's egging him on and just playing with their adoring bodies until they simply can't continue. She grinned for a moment as she heard the woman call her Zuzu daddy as he took her from behind while Himiko bit deep into one of his sweet spots. Oh that would be so wonderful. She could definitely make it work and it wouldn't take too long either. Just the right words and Izuku would get his own delight. She inhaled and giggled once more as she thought about the steps it would take, but as if by some divine hand, Himiko felt the heat creep away from her and her senses return as she slowly sat up. Most of the fantasies were still fresh in her mind, but she had no concept of how long it lasted or what she had said while under the sway of her urges. There was a taste of cotton in her mouth and she saw the set of holes in one of her pillows. Alright, so she hadn't broken anything. That was a win in her books. Brushing herself off and getting up from the bed, she cut the recording and put the camera away after popping the tape out. She grimaced at the fact she would have to show this to Ochako as part of her parole, but it had to be done. Putting it on her dresser, Himiko walked over to the kitchen and downed one of her many packets of blood like her quirk doctor told her to do after a non-violent episode. Throwing the drained pack away, she moved herself to her laptop and opened a blank document and began to vent her fantasies to the screen. Strangely, she felt like this new novel would be something close to a bit. Two hours of productive work later, the front door swung open and her lovers walked in with bags of groceries, looking refreshed and gleeful to be in each other's presence. Then they both turned to her and Himiko knew they were going to grab her the second they were able. It wasn't a lusty thing, but they were insanely cuddly. She actually felt bad about having to ruin the good mood, but she had a legal obligation to inform Ochako about her episodes and show she would. Standing up from her chair, Himiko stared at the woman with gloom about her. Hey Chiki, I need to talk to you alone for a moment. Quat. Izuku and the heroine flinched at her dreadfulness, but like the angel she was, Ochako followed her into the bedroom. Pursing her lips, Himiko hesitated a bit before handing the girl the tape. While you guys were gone I had another psychosis episode. It wasn't homicidal in nature, but it was violent. Not any more than the usual shit in my dome, but, yeah. Also, I may have said some things about you in here so I apologize in advance if it was anything weird. Quat. The heroine studied the plastic brick in her hand for a moment with a seemingly endless supply of sympathy and kindness before giving the villainous the I'm here for you if you need my help look. That's fine Miko, but what exactly happened? Were you having a quirk fit question mark and quat? The blonde blushed slightly and looked to the ground. No, nothing that serious. It was a lot more mundane since I wanted to make a diary while you guys were away and then I started thinking about Zuzu and the things we do. Then it kinda snowballed until, I was in la la land dot and quat. Ochako pursed her lips at the fact and set the tape aside as she stepped forward to hug her. Letting Miko just hang off her for a bit before speaking up. I'll file this away tomorrow when I leave for work, but don't worry it won't be anything bad. Now can I do anything for you question mark and quat. The slasher sucked in air through her teeth as her latest fantasy still remained fresh in her mind. This is gonna sound weird, but, could you start calling Zuzu, daddy question mark and quat. The question wasn't received with nearly the same level of repulsion, hesitation or indignation. Instead Ochako merely shrugged. Okay, I can do that dot and quat. Himiko blinked in astonishment. You're not gonna put up a little fight with this question mark and quat. The crime fighter rolled her eyes as she grabbed her by the wrist and pulled her forward. Miko, I've kissed you before and had a threesome with you and Zuki less than a week ago, this is nothing compared to that. Now, come on and help us make dinner dot and quat. Dragging her out to the living room, Ochako let go of the girl right as Izuku swooped in to scoop her up. He was kissing and grabbing and rubbing himself against her with every bit of comfort he could give, all the while looking like the happiest man on earth. Then the woman who was not being suffocated with affection spoke up as she flicked of the stove. Hey Zuki, I'm going to call you daddy from now on when we aren't in public, understand question mark and quat. 
The man looked up from gripping his beloved darling with surprise, but looked to Himiko with an expression that asked, "Do you mind this?" To which she gave a thumbs up, earning her a kiss that flattened her lungs as Izuku made his way to their lover. Sure thing, Rosie. Now how exactly do we make this recipe work? Question mark and quad. Without another word, she proceeded to smack him right on the ass the second he stepped into the kitchen and gestured to the upper cabinets with a spatula. You just prep the ingredients while the oven warms up. Miko will set the table and I'll handle getting everything right. Okay, Daddy? Question mark and quad. He leaned over and grabbed the brunette by the hips, kissing her deeply before grinning like a madman. Sure thing, darling. We'll get this done soon enough. Dot and quad. Receiving another kiss from the man who she adores, Himiko was wordlessly dismissed as he began to sort the foodstuffs after washing his hands, only to have Ochako grip her by the rim of the pants on the way out and kiss her as well. The woman winked at her and swatted her on the ass as she turned to do her self-prescribed duty, spreading the silverware and plates in order. Himiko had gotten a sneaking suspicion as the two of her lovers eyed each other and her that she may get her desires fulfilled, but more than she hoped for, and for some reason that scared her. Thanks for making it to the end. You really are a different breed. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.